up guys, this your boy, Barca boy, 103, today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours, we do have a lot of topics to discuss, firstly, in regards to the career midfield position, we have been linked with two very, very good players in Denny Almo and Florian Verts, who both expressed their interest in joining Barcelona, and Barcelona do have very, very good reports on them, we're going to discuss the current situation, also the price that's currently set for both the players in the Bundesliga but of course for the imminent future in January the main priority of course is the arrival of Victor Roque we have many updates on his arrival of course in January and also some crazy news about his injury update as well also of course another person that Barcelona want to strengthen in the, in the upcoming windows is the pivot position we've talked a lot about this over recent videos and our two Vermeeren's name has emerged again as Royal Antwerp have set the price for the Belgian midfielder a lot of updates around the club we have quotes coming in from Christensen how he's not happy that he didn't start the Porto match and him playing in the pivot La Maniema, the club want to build him up with muscle we have updates around the camp now uh, a spy Barca project on Laporta's health on the economic lever of course and even on injury updates with Yavi positive news coming in from Spain and also with Frankie de Jong how the club and Xavi and Frankie himself are considering or risking him with painkillers for the classic code before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes in this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it let's start off with the transfer news over the past 48 hours now the first player that we have been linked with is the player that we have been linked with a lot since Juan Laporta has been elected as president, even at the beginning of the suburb, there are a lot of links with him, and then he renewed his contract with this current club. And now the links are re emerging again, and that is the return of Danny Almo. Now, Build in Germany are reporting that Danny Almo wants to sign for Barcelona. He plans to leave in 2024. Lies will be ready to sell him while Xavi likes a player, but a 60 million euro release clause can be a problem for Barcelona. Clubs like Real Madrid, Manchester City, and Atletico Madrid are very much interested in Danny Almo, but the player is clear that his destiny is. Barcelona, Liza would welcome 60 million euros, precisely the amount they need to pay the refinancing costs for salaries and infrastructure as well. So Build are saying that Danny Almo this summer wants to go to Barcelona and of course his price will be 60 million euros, which is of course his release clause. Mundo Portivo reporting that if Barcelona want to sign Danny Almo, they first have to settle the accounts. The player has not closed any doors yet. Look, I think Danny Almo is a cracking player. For 60 million, I think that money should be going towards the pivot first. I think the pivot has to be the first thing that we address, whether you want to sign Zubimendi, Kimmich, Moscardo, Vermeeren, that has to be the first thing that we address. And with us being with Danny Almo now, I doubt we're going to spend any money on fullbacks this summer. I think it will be Alex Valle and also Julian Arujo coming in, which I think is a good thing. But I think Danny Elmo, great player. I think he'd be a great player also to provide coverage and competition for Pedri on the left-hand side of the midfield. Can play on the wings as well. Can play the center forward. And of course, he's, in, he's from Barcelona. He's from the academy. He's from La Masia. So there's that extra connection you could say with him. Still very, very young. But I think we're at a point now where the price is going to be the issue. We'll wait and see how our restrictions will be in the summer. We'll wait and see what our transfer budget is. Of course, we have the 200 million euro transfer budget that we did in, in the uh, not last summer, but the summer before. Then, of course, we can go and get Danny Alba for sure. Again, the club do need to sign another player in the midfield to provide coverage and competition for Pedri, like we were like with Lo Celso over the past few windows. Also, Alex Benya from Villarreal as well for around about the same price. I'd much rather we're getting Danny Elmo because he provides that comp coverage and competition and also he's very versatile as well. So wait and see how things develop. I think it's too early to tell. I think also the transfer price is a bit heavy for what Barcelona need to prioritize this summer. But we'll wait and see how things turn out. But Danny Elmo is planning a Barcelona return in 2024 and the club are keeping the options open. Now another player with the exact same profile as Danny Olmo that we have also been linked with is Florian Averse. Again, same league as well in the Bundesliga, both attacking midfielders who can again provide the coverage and competition for Pedri. Gabriel Sanz, Mundo Portivo is reporting that Barcelona have been taking note of Florian Averse, but he is going to be an expensive signing. We're hearing that Bayer Leverkusen want around 80 to 100 million euros. For 40 inverts again what a player he is if you're if you're telling me now Danny Almo for 60 or verts for 80 plus of course I would favor Danny Almo I think it will adapt quickly he's Spanish speaks a language from the academy he does a lot of pros to Danny Almo but 
let's say this summer we don't get a Danny Albo, then not next summer, but the summer after that, we can go for Florian Verts for around the same price, 60, 50 million, 50 million euros. I wouldn't mind that. I think Burst is a great player. Of course, it does help that he is a Barcelona fan. Very, very widely confirmed at this point. He said it in multiple interviews. The issue is, again, is going to be the price tag. And also, can he do it outside the Bundesliga? We've seen Kai Havertz in the same situation as Florian Burst buying Leverkusen, playing well, goes to Chelsea, doesn't do too well, going to Arsenal, not doing too well so far. So you don't want to make that same mistake twice. Of course, you can't judge Burst on what happened with Kai Havertz, but it does give you a bit of indication how things can turn out. So we'll wait and see with Burst. I think, again, very, very good player. I don't think he's as versatile as Denny Almo, but in the attacking midfield he was he's been unbelievable of course he just come back from an acl injury you have to take note of that as well he had a great season last season of course playing under chabby alonso as well so we'll see how things turn out but again i think there's more concrete links with Danny almo than there is verse again verts good notes but he's going to be expensive Danny almo price is set Barcelona had the door, doors open and Danny Almo wants to come. So we'll wait and see how things turn out between the two players. I think right now most likely the likely one is Danny Almo, but Verge can definitely be an option for the future. Now in regards to the pivot position, we have been linked with one player and that player is Artur Vermeeren and it is coming in from Gabriel Sanz and Deportivo and he's come out saying that Vermeeren is valued at 20 million euros and Barcelona again do have very good reports on the player. Now a few months ago, we were hearing 30 million. Now we're hearing 20 million. I think 20 million for Vermeeren is a good price to take a risk on a young player. Again, Barcelona do like the player. We know that Deco and Mark Overmars, the two uh, sporting directors for the two clubs respectively, have spoken when we last played them in the Champions League. We'll wait and see what happens when we go to Belgium. We play Royal Antwerp. I think it's the final game of the Champions League around middle of December. So that'll be you know, coming out January transfer window. We'll see if Deco makes any push with Mark Overmars. Again, I think Vermeeren is a big risk, but for that price, for what he's done so far at Antwerp, it's not too bad. I think Vermeer has a lot of pro pro promise. He's been showing a lot of his talent recently. Again, it is the Belgium League coming to La Liga. It is a big jump. I think it depends on what the club plan for. They want to go for two youngsters like Mascar de Vermeer, and fair enough, but they want to go all in for someone who's good right now, 29 years old, 28, and Joshua Kimmich. That's something different as well. But I think Vermeer is definitely an option, especially if the Kimmich deal is impossible. But again, I'm still favoring a lot. Uh, Martin Zubamendi. So we'll wait and see how things turn out again with Vermeer. I think there's obviously, you know, better chance with Verts and Dini Almo because Vermeer is cheaper. He's a position that we actually desperately need to reinforce. But again, the reports have been good and Royal Antwerp have set a price of around 20 million euros for the Belgian midfielder. Now, the main topic surrounding Barcelona over the past 48 hours has been the future and hopefully arrival in January of Victor. Roque and how he's recovering from his injury as well. We have a lot of insight, a lot of quotes coming in from his agent Andre Curry as well and how Barcelona think he's doing so far and what the plan is in January. Now having Miguel from AES has come out saying that Xavi has no doubt that he needs Victor Roque in January. Lewandowski's injuries and the difficulty in finding a guaranteed replacement in the current squad makes Xavi want the Brazilian striker in January even more. Apparently Xavi doesn't really trust Fran Torres too much in the striker position. Both Deco and some heavyweights of the board have made it clear to Xavi that they will do everything possible and impossible to advance the arrival of Victor Roque in January. Victor Roque is currently recovering from a third degree sprain in his right ankle that will prevent him from returning until the beginning of next year. Keep that in mind by the way. Xavi himself has called Victor Roque to reassure him that he is expected in Barcelona come January that he has to focus 100% on his recovery. The coach considered his arrival as vital if they want to take the next step forward. The Barcelona squad right now is very short, only 19 first team uh, fit players and Lewandowski as the only central forward. Victor Roque's arrival will not only serve to give more balance to the squad but also to be an escape value to dose Lewandowski. So again, having Gell here absolutely spot on. He said that again, that Victor Roque will be fit at the beginning of the new year. So around January, first week or so that Chavi wants him and the board has promised to do the best to bring him in, which of course will very likely be happening. Now, following that report, 21 Marti came out saying that in the January transfer window, there will be no exits and at most Victor Roque could arrive. So Juan Marti is saying, Best case scenario, Victor Roque arrives. Worst case scenario, nothing happens. So either Victor Roque comes in, that's the only action you're going to see in the January transfer window. But again, Juan Marti, quite conservative. We could say Mr. Negative as well. No, I'm not bitter that he blocked me. But nonetheless, you know, we've seen some things happen in January when he's come out saying that some stuff will not happen. Again, he's a very conservative journalist. He does have excellent sources, of course, but he does keep it on the safe side as always. Now, here look at this from Kobe. Also confirmed the news saying that Xavi wants Victor Roque in January and the club is working to generate the FFP in order to make it 
possible. Now, Chavi Campos from Catalonia Radio has come out saying that from the club's financial area, they confirmed to Deco and Chavi the arrival of Victor Roque in the winter period. There is also an option of another reinforcement if there are exits and the priority if the case happens is mid fielder so there you go so he's saying that look Victor Roque will arrive and if we do end up selling someone maybe a good offer comes and you never know the club can sign someone and if they do have that option the priority is to reinforce the midfield now Andre Curry the agent and the mastermind behind Victor Roque's arrival to Barcelona has been speaking with Raccoon on Victor Roque's arrival in January and also on a injury update this is the words of his agent He's come out saying that Victor Roque is recovering very well. We believe that in a maximum of four weeks, he can be ready. How crazy is that? Four weeks is like, what, mid-November? That's when we expect Frankie De Jong to come back, Lewandowski, and Kunde, and Victor Roque should be fit during that phase, according to his agent. Now, if that's the case, hugely positive. He can go back with Atletico Palmeiras, train there, maybe even play a game or two, and then come in January, fully fit ready to go he's also said the player and barcelona's plans for him to come in january and everything is agreed of course with the brazilian club so again the plan and what everyone wants including his club is for victor Roque to join barcelona in january not confirmed quite yet but we're basically there but again that's the big thing you heard having been in the first report saying that victor Roque will be fit beginning of the year when his agent is saying he can be back in four weeks which for me is absolutely wild now finally again Juan Martin has come out saying that La Liga have told Barcelona they need 25 million euros of fair play space to register both Gavi and Victor Roque in January you're probably wondering Gavi why we have to register him <laughs> I have no fucking idea the amount of times we've had to register Gavi is beyond me I don't know why we have to register him again nonetheless though 25 million euros is needed and that can easily be done with the uh, Liberal Football Finance Economic Lever that will bring in 40 million euros. So you could even say that Barcelona, they want to spend some money, can definitely register Roque, Gavi, and other signing on top of that as well. We'll give you guys the updates on the Liberal Football Finance near the end of the video on that economic lever. But 100% the economic lever is enough to bring in Victor Roque in January. So we'll wait and see how things develop on his recovery and also his arrival in January. But we expect that Victor Roque will get the green light to arrive to Barcelona in January and of course help the squad out tremendously. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 48 hours. First, we do have some updates on Alex Vai after, of course, the ESPN report about Barcelona looking for new fullbacks. His name has surfaced in the media. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo has come out saying that Xavi is very aware of Alex Vai, 19-year-old left back, who has been playing at a high level for Levante in the second division. He traveled Barcelona to the USA for the preseason tour, but the club preferred them to go out on loan and to grow elsewhere. He has started all nine matches for Levante and their coaches are delighted with him. With Balde already in the squad and Marc Alonso free in 2024, Alex Valle could be a home solution next summer. I think if he continues at this rate, impresses, why not? Bet on the La Masia. Again, there's no one really in the left-back market that you can say we should go for. I think the best option was going to be uh, Alex Grimaldo. He's going to Bayern Leverkusen. I doubt we can go for him. Jose Gaia was a good option. He's now committed his future with Valencia. Apart from that, I don't really see anyone who fits the mold that Barcelona need and also is available when you're left in their deal or will be a free agent come the summer and Valle has been getting a lot of good reports it's not of course the first time we've heard about this we heard a lot about him in the summer build up for last season as well with Barca Athletic we've heard that he's you know an excellent player I think again the coverage competition you kind of know that Balde is the starter but Valle can definitely push him I wouldn't mind it either and I see the same situation happening of course at right back with Julian Arujo returning from Las Palmas. So we'll wait and see how things develop in this area as well. Again, it will come to the Barcelona's economic situation, if they have the money to invest in the fullback, and also if Alex Valle continues to impress and perform at Levante. But so far, so good. And we could see Valle in the first team next season as the coverage and competition for Alejandro Balde at left back. Now, a player from the academy who has broke into the first team this season is, of course, Laman Yamal. And there is some updates in regards to making Laman Yamal stronger and more physique for the matches in La Liga. Fernando Polo from Deportivo has come out saying that Barcelona have decided a strength training routine for Le Yamal for him to gain muscle in accordance with his biological age. This was done before he picked up the minor injury at Granada. The club not only wants to prevent injuries but also respond to the current reality in football. Talent must be accompanied by physical work. Barcelona want to manage his minutes and matches and workload and training properly as his muscle have not fully developed yet just being 18. And that's honestly a fair shout. Again, he is a very 
skinny lad. I mean, I, I guess that was make him fast, but again, they want to build his muscle, make him build nice and slowly. That way, he won't progress too fast or too slow as well. We also have some news on his height as well. Fernando Polo also came out saying that Lebendima's height was already 180 centimeters when the measurement was taken in July, and Barcelona believe that he should not grow much more than that. He is taller than Rafinha, who's 176 centimeters, and he's also taller than Dembele at 178 centimeters. So again, he's only 16. Maybe when you hit 20 at the maximum, you won't grow after that. I think maybe around 18, he could grow a bit more. But he's currently 180. The club don't think he'll grow that much. Maybe at most 185 if it's, you know, if he gets a massive growth spurt from now until he's uh, 18 or 20. But again, the club do want to plan for the future for Lamani Yamal. They want to get his physical condition up. Of course, with Pedri, did that very late. I think Pedri only started doing that last summer, if I'm not mistaken. You know, building up muscle mass and uh, getting some strength in him. Again, Pedri was playing very skinny under Coleman the first year. Then Coleman slash Chabi in the second year. He started building, I believe, in the third year that summer. But slowly, again, you can still see he was kind of skinny last season. But now he's got some muscle mass on him. And the club plan on doing the same thing with Lamani Yamal. Now, sticking with Barcelona forwards in the first team, as we all know, we have uh, Joao Felix on loan from Atletico Madrid with Barcelona reportedly paying only 400,000 euros to Felix in wages for the entirety of his loan. And this was now officially confirmed by the club from the economic vice president, Eduard Romeu. He came out saying, it's true, Joao Felix has reduced his salary to join Barcelona. It's 400,000 euros for the entire loan. It's a very strong message from Joao. What happens in June, we hope to have the problem to consider him staying beyond this season. So now it's official official. The club have confirmed that Felix is on 400,000 euros as a wage for the entirety of his loan with Barcelona, but there is expectation of Felix receiving a pay rise from Barcelona. Catalonia Radio have come out saying that Joao Felix's salary will soon increase to 4 million euro gross, of course, so 2 million net in his pocket from 400,000 euros. Barcelona and the player previously agreed on this increase once the financial situation allowed it. Barcelona also believes the player is worth of the raise due to what he's been bringing to the team. Again, 4 million gross for Felix is nothing. 2 million net, you're looking at maybe what, like 40,000 a week, which <laughs> bargain for Felix. And of course, net gross is probably gonna be like 75,000 uh, a week, give or take. So he's gonna be earning that Sergio Roberto La Masia wage, which to be honest is still an absolute steal for Barcelona. And again, we'll wait and see how things develop in the next few months on his uh, expectation if he'll stay permanently. Again, I think his future is linked a lot with the future of Ansu Fati. And of course, Atletico Madrid do have a big part to play in him. He renewed his contract for two years. They have a set price on it. So complications with that. And that's more of a talk for April, May, slash June time. But for now, we do expect that Joao Felix will receive a pay rise after his great start to the season. Also, it was promised by the board once the financial situation allowed it to happen. Now, along with Joao Felix, another player that's been very, very influential and important for Barcelona this season has been, of course, Andreas Christensen. But according to Christensen himself, he was a bit happy. But according to Andreas Christensen himself, he was a bit unhappy with the situation that happened recently. He was doing an interview, of course, on duty with Denmark, and he was asked about him being on the bench for the Porto match. As we all know, it was Arujo and Kunde at center back, and Christensen said... I was disappointed not to play against Porto. I was frustrated if I don't play. In the Mallorca game, I thought I needed to rest because I was having some minor discomfort. But if I'm at my best, I do want to play. What I'll say to Christian is this. Your time will come. Again, Conde is injured now. Arujo is one tackle away from being out for two months. Again, you have to look at yourself as well. You have minor discomforts left, right, and center week in, week out. You're also made of broken glass as well. So I think you got to have a bit of tranquilo. In your sense, I think everyone and their moms can agree that Conde and Araujo are a better, better center backs than you all at your peak. You're a very, very good player who's come in when we needed someone. Like when Conde was playing right back, when Araujo was out uh, with an injury. So, still a very, very, very important player for Barcelona. And I have no doubt that he will start big games for Barcelona. Probably the Clasico at the end of this month. Now, Christian was also asked on playing the pivot. Again, a lot of rumors about him being a possible option in the pivot. Chavi said that he is an option. We do have a few players ahead of him in the pivot pecking order and Christensen said playing as a pivot I've tried before so it won't be new to me but they haven't asked me yet at Barcelona I'd love to try it a few times and have a chance to see what it's like so we'll wait and see again it probably will happen in games where you're at home and it's an easier opponent like um What's a good example of easy opponent right now? Like a Deportivo Alaves or maybe like a Elche. I mean, we're relegated, but some lower opposition side uh, in La Liga, of course, at home. Maybe we even see him play in the Copa del Rey in the pivot if 
we do have uh, center backs fit at that point. He hasn't really played much in December time. So we'll wait and see how things develop in that sense. But again, Christensen was very unhappy that he did not start the match against Porto and is looking forward to possibly playing in the pivot at some point during the season. Let's now discuss some of the injury updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, on the injury of Gavi, who's just finished playing 90 minutes for Spain. In the last video, I told you guys that Gavi got a knock in Spain training. We'll wait and see how things develop. Turns out, it was positive news. Kandasir came out saying that Gavi is fine. He suffered a blow in training, which caused him to have a little bit of discomfort. But according to his environment, he is fine. He's not injured, they say. But it is to be seen if he plays against Scotland or if the Fuente will rest him, of course. Didn't get rested, played the entire 90 minutes alongside Ferran Torres. Alejandro Baldi only played 45 minutes, so that's a very uh, positive sign there. Jordi Hill said that Gabby will be available for Spain's match against Scotland. Of course, he played 90 minutes. He left out the training last uh, minute yesterday due to some uh, unimportant uh, discomfort, which happened due to less resting periods since this last match. It was just a precaution. So Gabby is fine. Thank God for that. And hopefully he will not start the next match for Spain. And that'll be a very, very important boost for Barcelona. The final injury update is on another midfielder, his midfield partner, you could say, in Frankie de Jong. Fernando Polo from the has come out saying that Chavi dreams of having Frankie de Jong available for the Clasico, but no risk will be taken in any case. His ankle support will be removed on Monday, and the feelings after that will determine his availability on the 28th of October. The coaches consider him a vital player versus Madrid, and if his evolution of the injury is favorable in the coming days, the possibility of infiltration will be raised. Neither Frankie de Jong, who is analytically like a few others and thinks everyone before deciding, nor Chavi will take the slightest of risks in any way shape or form so Frankie de Jong is walking out with a boot of course the boot will be removed on Monday and if he's you know can move the ball well they might pump him with some painkillers and drugs so he can play in the Classico look at this point I think we're already screwed for the Classico you mean in terms of injuries I think like we can go out there and get a result so you gotta just hold your hands up you know no Lewandowski uh, no Kunde, no Frankie Rafinha is just coming back and Petty is just coming back at this point you're just like, you know what there's no risk to be taken. This is not a do or die match. We still have 30 plus games left, or not, not 30 plus games, but 28 plus games left of the league to, you know, recover the points if we do unfortunately end up dropping points, which hopefully will not happen. I don't think that'll be the case. So I wouldn't risk Ricky Young in any way, shape or form. I don't care if he says, boss, I'm happy. I can run, I can shoot, give me a little painkillers and I'll go out there. No, not worth it whatsoever. But again, it will come down to the decision of both Frankie De Jong, Chavi, and the medical staff, but there is a very small hint that Frankie De Jong could end up playing if things go very, very well, and we inject him with some painkillers and stuff like that. So wait and see how things are done with Frankie De Jong. There is a slight chance, I'd probably maybe at 0.7% of him playing in the Classico, but again, absolutely zero risk in any capacity, any way, shape, or form will be taken. Now, speaking about Frankie De Jong, he could become very, very important in the January transfer window if he does end up renewing his contract because, of course, that will free up some FFP fair play margin for Barcelona to play around with in the January transfer window. Now, A's have come out saying that Xavi understands that the situation of the club does not allow great signings or expenses. The coach considers that he can cover this with the current players without the need of reinforcement this January. The arrival of Victor Roque would not yet fully balance the squad. It will be necessary to double position as of that with the pivot, where today you only have Oyo Romeo and maybe with El Cagundo one as the most used alternative. Barcelona are working hard to get enough fair play in the winter market. They need to sell players. Right now, the 40 million euro promised by German uh, Liberal Football Fund together with the young renewal would be the most viable alternative so in terms of revenue coming in from barcelona to help play around with ffp at best we're going to get that economic lever, a lever from the football finance and the renewal of frankie de Jong. that's all we're going to get unless we sell a player that of course help out quite a bit but chavi is content with the current situation again he would like Victor Roque to come in and if other means fall in our hands he wants someone to come in in the pivot again who you who you can get in the pivot for a loan for six months or on a free transfer or cost little to no money i have no idea the only player that really springs to mind for me is guido rodriguez maybe we can get convince liverpool to release thiago early i mean i don't know that there's there's options out there but it depends what the rigor room for barcelona will be again priority victor roque first once victor roque comes in depending on when he comes in it could come in january 1st 10th 20 22nd 29th we don't know yet, but the clubs do still want to keep an eye on the midfield market, more specifically the pivot, in case something comes up. Again, Chavi is very happy with the squad, but he wants double players per position. And right now, in the pivot, there's only Roy Romeo, and in the striker, it's only Lewandowski. So with Victor Roque coming in, he'll double there. And again, this leaves leave the option for another pivot to come in. So wait and see what happens in January, but at most, you can expect two signings. 
Now with the international break currently taking place, of course, some players in Barcelona who have not gone international break did play a game behind closed doors. This news broke in from Tony Juan Martin from Sport and he's come out saying the Barcelona first team players who did not get called up for their national teams and the reserve team played a match during training yesterday. The first team narrowly won 2-1 to one with goals from Sergio Roberto and Neil Caldero. Diego Percan scored for the reserve side. Inaki Peña, Hector Font, uh, Fali, Inigo Martinez, Marcus Alonso, Oya Romeu, Gillian Fernandez, Noah Darvik, Mark Giliu, and also Juan Hernandez were part of the first team XI. So first team players, you have Inaki Peña, Inigo, Marcus, Oriol, and that's pretty much it. So can we just keep in mind, by the way, that Sergi Roberto didn't start for the first team XI. That is wild. Darvik and Gilliam have offered very good feelings. They have moved very well and they've shown personality and they have generated satisfaction in Chavi's coaching staff. That is absolutely wild to me that Roberto did not start for the first team. He scored a goal, but didn't start, which is wild in my opinion. But again, very good for the fitness and, you know, keeping up with the match rhythm that you do need. Again, the reserve team, you know, isn't that great. The first team should be winning. The fact they only won 2-1 one, one. shows the level of these reserve players do not get called up for their uh, national team. But again, everyone plays their part. It's important. It's very good for them to keep that match rhythm up, match fitness up, and also keep their mind sharp as well ahead of very key matches after the international break. Now, a topic that we haven't discussed about in a very, very long time is Espy Barca. Of course, the rebuild of the Spotify camp now, which apparently, according to reports right now, is going very well and is ahead of schedule. Muna Bortiva was reporting the first phase of the demolition of the camp now is almost complete. The Turkish club Linkum Construction in charge of the operation is meeting all the deadlines that are currently set by Barcelona. Following that report, the club released an official statement saying the main remodeling license for the Spotify camp now has been approved and granted by the Barcelona City Council and allows the full execution of the construction works of the entire stadium. And also, Andrea Sanchez from Masque Palotas has come out saying that Spotify camp now works are three or four months ahead of schedule at the club. They are very optimistic and from Lincoln, they are sure that they will meet all the deadlines. That's very, very good news. We could even, uh, again, the plan right now is to move back in November of 2024 to the Spotify camp now. I think the best case scenario is we can start the season at the Spotify camp now. Of course, the plan right now, play two months at the uh, Olympic Stadium and then move probably after an international break at some point next year to the camp now. But if we can start the season there, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Of course, no movement needed. You can get the dressing room all sorted, the routine of the players as well. So that'd be very, very important. But don't get too ahead of ourselves. We'll wait and see how things develop. Now, we do have some quick updates around around Espy Barca. Not really, but stuff that really helped Espy Barca grow. Of course, one of them being money. Of course, we need money to supply the uh, the money to link them to get the construction and get the remodeling done. One of the main sources for Barcelona is, of course, merchandise. And Nike, again, moving absolutely mad. Mundo Bordivo has come out saying there are no stocks of Barcelona's home kit at the club stores at the camp now. New shirts will arrive on Monday, October 23rd, the week of the Classico. The club claims Nike is not complying with the schedule again. This is the second year in a row where Nike is slacking with the supplies. Again, we talked about this last week. We talked about... Barcelona in talks with Nike over a renewal to give them the naming rights for the Olympic Stadium. They gotta include this in the deal somehow. Like, bro, you guys have been slacking two years now. You're not supplying the shirts whatsoever. Now, the, the, the main store is gonna go two weeks with no home kits whatsoever. That's absolutely wild in my eyes. Hopefully, the club do bring this up when they negotiate with Nike over a new deal. And finally, we do have some uh, updates on the health of our president, who's running these whole entire operations in Juan. Laporta. Fran Cross has come out saying that President Juan Laporta is the talisman for Barcelona because in the only two times he has been absent, Barcelona have not been able to win their games. Laporta was revived to reduce his trip because of medical reasons. We heard a lot about this. You know, he's trying to lose some weight. He's a bit overweight. He's now losing weight, doing well. But one of the main things is that he cannot travel too much. So we didn't see him go to, uh, when he went to Portugal for Porto, he actually had to drive there because he's recommended not to take a flight. So he actually drove from Spain to Portugal to watch the Porto match. And, you know, anything that involves him flying. So I doubt he'll be in Saudi Arabia for the Spanish Super Cup because it's difficult for him to fly. And again, it's just better for his health. He has been looking a little bit thin lately. I'm not going to lie. So if he keeps it up, my boy on the uh, weight loss journeys. But again, Joan Laporte is running all the operations despite the difficulties with his health and is doing an absolutely fantastic job, of course, at Barcelona. 
So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing of course is your thoughts on Barcelona bringing in a new creative midfielder. Who would you go for? Dani Almo or Florian Verts? Second, your thought on the arrival of Victor Roque in January. Do you believe it will happen or not? Third, your thoughts on Arthur Bermirin being the option right now in the pivot. Do you agree with that? Are you happy with the price? Would you go for him or not? Finally, your thoughts on the injury concern concerns at Barcelona. Are you happy that Gabby played for Spain to keep up his fitness? Are you disappointed with that? And your thoughts on Frankie de Jong being risked for the Classic Co. Would you risk him or not? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. Barca.